Time to look at what the papers have for us and, of course, our analysis with our guest analyst, Chris Kende Wando, who is a chartered mediator and conciliator, joins us every Tuesday on the program. Chris Kende Wando, good morning to you and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Hope for some chair in the papers this morning. Let's uh, kick things uh, off with the um, leadership newspaper with the following headlines. Presidential running mates, candidates, parties face hard choices, 72 hours to deadline. Presidential running mates, candidates, parties face hard choices, 72 hours to deadline. The writers through that headline, APC stakeholders want Northern Christian as running mate to Tinubu X. ACF scribe roots for Dogara. Shatima Ganduje El Rufai still on the card. Atiku picks Atiku PDP pick running mate today. Wiki deserves to be VP. Oka, the story is on the front page. More from the leadership. FG fails to meet June one takeoff for sugar tax regulation. FG fails to meet June one takeoff for sugar tax regulation. One wonders why. Yobe Lawan in limbo over Senate return ticket. Lawan in limbo over Senate return ticket. FG issues code of practice for online platforms. Gunmen kidnap priest, Anglican bishop, wife in Plateau Oyo. Uh, more from the leadership. First Bank gets $150 million African Bank loan. African Port qualifies Super Eagles, trash Sao Tome 10 nil. And primary, Zohanese. Youth give uh, Southeast APC. PDP delegates quit notice. Quite interesting. The delegates are not able to choose who they want anymore. Uh, we'll look at this as we go on. Move over to the Nation newspaper with these headlines. Our killings, the controversy rages over ISWAP links. Still on uh, from last week. Thought we were going to be past that at this time. Faimi joins Akhir Dulu to doubt the federal government's claim. Burial for 40 victims on Friday. Herders invade Niger Delta Creek's IYC alleges. Okay, more from the nation. AKT, vote without fear, says Peace Panel. Vote without fear, says Peace Panel. Parties to sign pact on Wednesday. One only wonders if these have worked in the past and will work now. A picture of retired General Abdul Salami Abubakar beside that headline. Clerics kidnapped in oil plateau. Kogi, um, abductors demand 50 million Naira. Gunmen in Jeff 4 in Oshun bus attack. 322,000 workers join in contributory pension scheme. Those are two unrelated headlines. TCN's incompetence cause of grid collapse this is coming uh, on the heels of that particular incident, national grid collapsing. And uh, the writer to that headline power generation drops to 9 megawatts. 9 megawatts. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram get federal government's operating guidelines. Uh, and, of course, uh, last few ones from the nation. Airborne, you won't vote. Peter B. says Umahi. Buhari celebrates Abdul Salami at 80. Two die in Lagos Ibano road accident. And PDP reps tip Wike, others for running mate. And uh, we have uh, the Guardian newspaper up next with the following headlines. PDP narrows VP choice to Wike Okoa Udom. Wike Okoa Udom is what the party is looking at. APC inviting nationwide crisis with Muslim Muslim presidential ticket. Groups warn. Stakeholder tasks parties on issue-based campaigns for ocean polls. Gunmen abduct Catholic priest in Plata, and how helicopter shelled southern Kaduna villages by survivors. It's quite a sad one. More from the paper. WHO decries acute blood shortage in Nigeria, other low-income countries, and scientists record cancer cure. Or scientists record cancer cure breakthroughs. Actually, they're recording that. So scientists record cancer cure. Breakthroughs. These are some of the headlines coming uh, on the front page of The Guardian. Let's uh, round things off with a look at the headlines on the front page of The Punch. Southeast PDP demands Atiku's VP slot. Party dismisses obese threat. 
in the riders to that headline. Party leaders hold crucial meeting with Atiku today, say OB's popularity only on social media. Former Anambra governor, a phenomenon, will shock PDP at presidential poll campaign team. And only running mate slot can wrest Southeast votes from Obi, Anambra PDP spokesman. National electricity grid crashes from 3,703 megawatts to 9 megawatts, says FG. Uh, that uh, is found on page 19. You might want to think twice about reading that story uh, for the sake of your sanity. 40 over Basaka victims get mass burial on Friday. NNPC supplies 1.523 billion liters of fuel in three weeks. Abuja queues persist. And for those in other parts of the country, you'll be quite surprised to hear that there are still queues in Abuja. Workers Sean Lawan's appeal continues strike as National Assembly resumes. Mobile transactions jump to 4.86 trillion naira in four months, according to the NIBSS. Uh, FG orders Twitter, TikTok, and others to appoint country reps. Three soldiers faint at the Democracy Day Parade. Buhari, Jonathan, Tinubu, others present. I wonder why uh, this would happen. Uh, Lebanese driver faces manslaughter as crushed Lagos lady dies. Sad one. Strike. Asu threatens sanctions for non-complying chapters. 913 killed and 265 abducted in May, according to a report it's going to be found on page 8 of The Punch. Aja Singh's son, others protest insecurity in Southwest, preach self-defense. It's quite one to keep an eye on. Customer friends lynch, bomb Lagos, or lynch burn Lagos sex worker for keeping Quran in room. Customer friends lynch and burn Lagos sex worker for keeping Quran in room. And gunmen epidemic, or kidnap epidemic rather, gunmen abduct, Quora Bishop, wife, Plato, CN chair, monarch, and all this. These are some of the headlines on the front page of The Punch. You have to leave it at that. And welcome at this point our guest, Chris Kane Wandu, um, chartered mediator and conciliator. Chris, good morning to you and thanks for your time once again. Thank you very much for having me once again. All right, um, we, we start off with a big one um, as far as uh, a lot of Nigerians will be concerned, which is the. Uh, uh, power supply. It affects everybody. And I'm sure people will be more concerned about that for now um, than maybe if some of the other stories. So let's start off with that. Nine megawatts is what the federal government is saying. It's quite interesting to see that they are the ones um, actually telling the public the situation of things. Your thoughts, please. Yes, nine megawatts. I don't know whether that can power uh, up to two local or two or three local government areas uh, as it were. So um, if we have um, 774 local governments in Nigeria, I just uh, have a power supply that can power um, about two or three local governments. That shows you the magnitude of um, the problem we, are, we have. And uh, we'll be saying this time and time again that the federal government, uh, despite all its promises, uh, especially this current government, um, since 2015, to be able to improve the power supply in Nigeria, generation and supply, we are still on a daily basis being, um, find ourselves in the situation we have. In as much as I will not blame only this current government for the uh, problem we are having in the power sector, this goes back as far back as I can remember. Don't forget that uh, there was uh, so much effort by the Obasanjo uh, government to be able to uh, improve the uh, power supply, uh, generation and supply in Nigeria even with the issue of the turbines and rest of them. Uh, at the end of it all, the corruption couldn't let that fly. And I remember vividly the uh, probe that was instituted in the House of Assembly, I think by the House of Representatives, and so much um, came up. But at the end of it all, what happened? I think that probe panel was led by into the middle of the House of Representatives. At the end of it all, nothing came out of it. But here we are. Uh, when other countries are, are, are continuing to improve uh, on their power supply on a daily basis, we are having serious um, uh, power collapse. Uh, at the last count, I, I can't remember now, I mean, they said that we've had this year alone. And that will continue, except the government do what they're supposed to do. Um, 
Power is the engine room of every economy anywhere in the world. And where you cannot be able to provide that, forget about whatever your economy, whatever you want to do, because there are so many things tied to that. The SMEs depend solely on, uh, most of the time, on the, um, the uh, national grid and the electricity. But what we have now, Kofi, I can tell you that there's no single household in Nigeria that does not have one single um, uh, generator. Go and do your, go and do your, no single home. Some have two, some have three. The same thing with companies, uh, with companies. So uh, at the end of it all, what happens? We are find ourselves in a situation where it seems, at a point, there was a time that a minister told us, uh, I think that um, our power supply is being affected by witches. Uh, I can't, I'm, I'm sure you remember that particular uh, <laughs> minister. I think it was Nebo, uh, Professor Nebo that said it, that witches, uh, we are the ones affecting our, but that goes beyond which is for goodness, for goodness sake. This is this is lack of planning. This is lack of vision, and this is the lack of the kind of leadership we've come to find ourselves. What does it take to provide power? Go to countries like Ghana. If you go to Ghana, Ghana experiences 24 hours light every day. That was the time they celebrated. I don't know whether one full year or three years of non international power. Go to South Africa, the same thing. Go to our neighboring country, even Ben here, Ben Ben. I'm just saying Ben. With due respect to that country, they have adequate uh, power supply. How can a country that is so blessed so much that we cannot be able to provide power for ourselves? As we are talking, uh, uh, um, Gofi, I'm on generator. For me to be on this program, I have to be on generator. Uh, yes, you just be seeing me in the dark, and you know how dark I am. So that is the situation of things, and it's just a quite unfortunate. Very really sad wonder. The, the federal government came out to they, they themselves reveal that it's uh, nine megawatts now but um interestingly they are they are uh, uh, blaming the transmission company of nigeria uh, uh they're saying citing incompetence from the transmission company of nigeria uh for the the collapse of the national grid in fact um uh, more than 24 hours after the collapse of the national grid this is as a nation experience supervisor is putting it uh they saying that they the Nigerian Consumer Protection Network has put the blame of the system collapse on the transmission company of Nigeria, which it said failed to get its priorities right. Um, this blame game, um, what are your thoughts on this? Because the federal government has also said some things about this in the past. Is, is this, is this uh, the situation as you see it, or are there other underlying issues that need to be tackled? It's just about the TCN alone. Is the TCN not an agent of government? Is, is, not, is, it, is it not an agent under the federal government? So if you blame this year, you're still blaming yourself. I find this government and, uh, and operators of this government, as they, I equate them with the ostrich, that buries his head in the sand and leaves his whole body exposed. That is what we've always had. I always be blaming them. Every, somebody will always find a fortune child uh, on this. What of the minister? We have a minister of um, uh, power and minister of state for power. What is their job? What of the various agencies under the Federal Minister of Power? And at a point, we are saying that, oh, that um, ministry should be onboarded. And um, because there you had uh, you had one minister administering the minister of, um, the Ministry of Power, the Ministry of Works and Housing. And that was uh, um, about to the um, Some years back, the president, in his wisdom, decided to just unbond that. And then uh, Fashola is now in charge of uh, Works and Housing, where we have a minister. For um, for power, what is his job? What has he done in the past since he came into office? How many megawatts have he added to the national grid? Those are the issues that will be asking. So, if you are talking, you say it's TCN that uh, has it, that um, you are forcing the um, TCN. What have you done? If you think that those there are not doing the right thing, why don't you get them dismissed and get other competent people to be able to do their best? It is always the situation we have. You know, there will always be problems. It's just like we are, uh, we are talking about the petrol. I had this when we are reading out the headlines and talking, oh, there's still uh, uh, queues in Abuja. We have a minister of petroleum. We have an MPC. We have the GMD of NMC and the rest of them. But you still have fewer queues in Abuja. What have the minister done? What have the minister, uh, minister of state done? What have the GMD of NMPs done? Don't forget that the minister of petroleum is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, President Muhammad Buhari. If that sector is not working, I just ask um, those in charge to resign. Then in a, in a way, you're asking the president to resign because he has come to be seen as being incompetent when it comes to the issue of petroleum. Uh, that is how we roll. We move on as soon as nothing is 
is nothing is at stake. They are all campaigning now for us to vote for them in 2023. And they give you all the, they come with all the promises. At the end of it, or you come to realize that just as you say in Lagos Palace, which returns to another lorry era, when this government was coming, they said they are going to build more refineries um, to be able to take care of the shortfalls that we have in petroleum in Nigeria. Not a single refinery has been built since 2015 to date, and this government is about moving on. They talk, they said they are going to improve the power sector by adding 10,000 megawatts every year. By now, since 2015, they've been having 10,000. That means by now we should have had about 70,000 with about four to 5,000 we have now. We're talking about 75,000 megawatts. Nothing has been done. Instead, what do we have? Nine megawatts. So it is, that is Nigeria for you. And the problem with me is that most of these are leaders travel to other countries of the world. They, saw this, they see these facilities, they enjoy it. How, I find it, how they find it difficult to come and replicate what they see outside and enjoy the outside is what I am still finding difficult to understand. But it's quite unfortunate. We don't have anything. At a point, we're saying that people like me have been saying that, why don't you decentralize it? Why don't you just look at, allow the state to start generating power by themselves? It's not that the issue of generation of power is within the exclusive list. I know that Lagos State at a point was trying to do that. I don't know how far they've gone. But the fact remains that we cannot leave everything to, to, to the exclusive list. States should be allowed to be able to generate power. States should be able to tap resources within their own um, state or region and pay certain uh, amount of money to, to the federal government. That is how it worked in the First Republic. And that is why we had the level of development we had in the First Republic. The way it is running now, it is not looking good. To all right. All right. Uh, I, 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 I must say I'm, I'm tempted to leave out the political stories, you know, because they don't deserve our attention. Some would say with how they've all performed, especially the two leading parties. Maybe we should boycott them this morning. <laughs> I don't know if you're on the same page. We cannot. We cannot go. Maybe we should boycott them. And um, they're looking for their <laughs> VPs. We should just leave them do that because we have more pressing things to, that are affecting our daily lives. So, we'll, we'll, we'll have mercy on them and give them some yes, time in the analysis this morning. All right, all right. Um, even though Mercy isn't here on the program. But um, we move on to uh, some very, very um, sad news. Still with the Punch newspaper, and I think they've given uh, some space to this, uh, coverage to this ongoing uh, issue of kidnapping, as I have other papers. And the Punch has at the bottom of its front page, that's the Punch newspaper, uh, kidnap epidemic, they call it. Gunmen of Dark, Quara Bishop, Wife, Plato, Khan Chair, and Monarch, as well as others. Um, we heard that uh, some clergymen in Plato State, uh, Kogi State, as well as Quara State, were kidnapped. Do you think this is targeted in recent times as a targeted attempt at Christian and Christian uh, clergymen? Or you think these are just um, unrelated and isolated cases that have no premeditation attached to them? I have my fear. Um, I have my fear, and I think we agree with that assumption because um, Kofi, uh, when the uh, primate of the Methodist Church of Nigeria came out publicly to announce that he paid 15, uh, 100 million naira to those that kidnapped him, I knew that was a flag. It's a flag, and to these criminals, that will change their thinking that there might be so much money to make from kidnapping uh, clergymen. And that to me is my personal opinion. I may be wrong. So, but that to me uh, was, uh, have become a, a norm and that has been able to uh, galvanize some of the kidnappers to go for the clergymen, knowing fully well that if they are kidnapped, probably their churches and members will rally around to be able to, uh, uh, to bail them out with so much fund. 100 million is, is not a joke. But um, we can also look at it as isolated cases. Let's look at the one that happened. The Archbishop of Jeba, uh, I think, that was kidnapped along the Gumon Shore, uh, Ilori Road. Uh, he, he was traveling with his wife and uh, the driver and one other, I think his assistant, when their vehicle um, break down uh, somewhere along that road. And it was in that uh, process that the kidnappers came out of the bush, kidnapped him and his wife, and the, I think the driver, why they, they escaped or something like that. That in this, that cannot be said that. So that they just fell into that. It wasn't that they were asked for them. But the ones that have happened in uh, Plato and some other uh, places, I don't know. It's quite unfortunate that um, we still, we have to, uh, we are not talking about, we talk about power. We've talked about, um, uh, we've talked about petroleum. 
we are not talking of insecurity. And I ask myself, what next? There's practically, this country is practically shutting down. It's this country, it's not even shutting down, this country has shut down. If you know the level of insecurity across board, and that's bring me back again to 2015, because when we continue to talk about this, the, 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 the talk is always centered around what we are promised, because it was based on those promises that Nigerians make their decision to be able to vote our leaders. And part of this is that the government of the day promised to tackle insecurity and felt that the last government of good, good luck, Jonathan, didn't do enough uh, in the areas of security. But now things have gotten worse. On a daily basis, people are being killed, people are being kidnapped, people are being picked up. Don't forget that those involved in the Kaduna Abuja train that were kidnapped are still in the confine of the kidnappers. Just 11 were released um, yesterday or thereabout. We still have about 50 of them still there, close to 80 days after they were kidnapped and nothing has been done. And there are so many other ones. For everyone that is reported, I can tell you that 10 others must have happened that were not reported. That shows the high level of insecurity across the world. And the government seems to be helpless about it. Rather, you see the spokesperson of the government tell you that we are more secure than we were now, than we were in 2015. But that is not true. Um, the targeted attacks, the killing, look at what happened at Owo um, two Sundays ago, where about 40 worshippers were killed. We've been told that they'll be given mass burial. Uh, on Friday, the government came out quickly through the National Security Council to say that that um, attack was by a, a, a swap. But the governors of the state, Agro Dulu stated a statement, Governor Fayemi just made a statement also that he does not be, they do not believe that it was a, a, a swap that did that, that it must have been. Before you start blaming any, any particular um, group, what you need to ask yourself, have you arrested anybody? Because it's after arrest, an interrogation that you can be able to place, put in place um, to change the narrative and say this is person. They have not been able to arrest one single person behind that attack. How come that the federal government was so quick in coming out that saying that it was as well? But it's, um, that is why we are. And uh, this will continue, except we do the needful and make sure that every part of this country is well secured. And that brings us to politics again. Let us shine our eyes when it comes to 2023 so that we don't just listen to the fake promises that have been made to us, Nigerians should be able to take their destinies in their hand and make sure that those they are going to elect in 2023 are people that are capable of doing the job and not just any yes man. All right. Uh, 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 Chris Kenewan, that's why I ask, you know, do you think these attacks, because if we look at the recent ones, uh, after the Kaduna uh, 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 kidnapping, uh, we've had a number of Christian targets, be it in, in terms of uh, churches, or in terms of uh, clergymen. The one that took place, this latest one, one of the kidnap, uh, kidnap cases is in just, uh, in just East local government area where the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria was kidnapped. Uh, Reverend James Kantoma is his name. Um, he is a priest of St. Anthony's Parish at uh, Anguari community. He is a Christian Association of Nigeria chairman in that local government area. And that um, the abductor, the abduction was done at his house uh, on Monday morning. They went to his house to pick him. Um, if they didn't know who he was, they would not have known which house to go to. So it shows they knew who he was. We can look at the, the bishop in, in Plateau State who was kidnapped. We can go to Kogi State, sorry, in Kogi State who was kidnapped. We can go to Oyo State and all that. Do you think there is... These are just kidnappings. People, people saying, like you said, let's go for clergymen because they may have money to pay or people would, you know, raise money for them. Or you think that there is just an agenda somewhere uh, against the Christian community in Nigeria. Why? Why I'm asking this is because for you to stage an attack like what happened in Owo, it, it, there should be a reason. You know, we, we didn't have abductions there. We had just killings. There should be a reason. And the why? May help us understand what is going on. You think maybe this, this is a trend, or you think these are isolated and not necessarily premeditated kidnappings? I, I said it, that it could be a trend, apart from the fact that I said it before that the statement issued by the, the prime late of the Methodist Church could have galvanized some people looking at it that there's so much money to be made from the church. But it's not only, I can also see it that it's not just isolated. Don't forget that, although no kidnapping, there was also an attack. In Sokoto State, after the killing of that young lady, um, some churches were also attacked. 
I think the security agencies should check their strategies and make sure that uh, and look into what is up. Uh, the church to a large extent may be endangered now, and there's a need for us to be um, for security in most of the churches and worship centers uh, across the country. This might not just be out of the blues. Something definitely might be going on, but it is for the security agencies to be able to do the needful and make sure that all those that are involved in this are caught and dealt with squarely. All right. Uh, there's another one that's really worrying on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Uh, that has to do with uh, a lynching. And uh, we can see here we go again. It's a religious-related lynching. Uh, the headline at the bottom of the front page of an, the Punch newspaper says, uh, Customer friends lynch and burn legal sex worker for keeping Quran in room. So I'll just read a few lines from that, if you permit me. Lagos State Police Command has charged, the paper says, uh, three suspects to court for allegedly beating a prostitute or a sex worker, let's use the word, I think that's better put. The, the paper I used, the first word I used, but I think uh, a sex worker is better put. A commercial sex worker, uh, Hannah Salil, to death and setting her corpse ablaze for keeping the Holy Quran in her room. It was gathered by Punch Metro that one of the suspects patronized this sex worker, Salil, and after having um, an, an intercourse with her, reportedly paid her 1000 hour. Uh, for the service. A customer who was said to have left her room when she suddenly discovered that her 5,000 naira had got meeting reportedly uh, she ran to the, after the customer and accused him of stealing her money. Uh, the accusation, however, degenerated into an argument. Um, the customer was said to have mobilized his friends to Salil's room to search for the missing money. The paper says, while searching the place, the friends reportedly found a Quran underneath her pillow. And uh, as so said, Sali was questioned for, the, for possessing the Quran with the kind of job she was doing, adding that the customer and his friends who became infuriated by the discovery pounced on her and beat her up, setting her uh, ablaze. Setting her ablaze. Um, there's another sad one. Another sad one. And uh, this is going to be the, three, uh, the third one in, in quick succession. After the one that happened in uh, Sokoto, Another one happened in Abuja. This is Lagos. And that has become the trend. Um, we are certain individuals are taking the laws into their hands and uh, are fighting for God, as it were. Uh, the one that happened in Sokoto is about a lady who was uh, alleged to have made um, certain um, statements that some of them find um, not palatable and decide to lynch her. That in, in, Kadu, uh, in Abuja happened in, uh, in a market where the a man was also alleged to have made certain comments and he was lynched. This one in Lagos, somebody came to patronize a prostitute or sex worker, as you said, at the end of it all, uh, they ransacked her place and saw a Quran and, and decided to kill her and not only kill her, but burn her. That shows the level of inhumanity that some of our, our, our people are exhibiting. Human life doesn't matter again. Even if you have anything against anybody, the right place is to go, is to, go to the police and report the person and the person will get arrested. But to take in the laws into your hands is the worst of all crimes. And it's good that uh, the uh, police have arrested um, the, those in charge. The three, in the three incidents so far, we don't know what has happened. Uh, whether, uh, I know that that was Sokoto, some prosecution is going on. I don't know how far the case has gone. That of Abuja, we've not had anything about it. This is Lagos again. If this is not put in check, then the rest are sure that this will become the norm. And where people just for whatever reason we just people just pick up and decide to um, kill other people. Some some people can just free economists can just take up that as a as a, as a, a way of um, eliminating their uh, enemies. You just come up, shut up that the person has done this in the name of this particular religion and the rest of them. Before you know it, people gather around and kill. That is jungle justice, which must not be allowed to prevail or to stand in Nigeria. All right. Um, we'll still have some, some, some more bad news. Um, uh, to, to people who live outside Abuja, and I'm, I'm taking it that you're joining us from Abuja, as usual, uh, Chris Kane Wandu. Um, for those of us outside Abuja, it's strange when we hear of uh, fuel queues or you know, fuel scarcity in your city, in the federal capital territory. But the punch uh, gives some space to that uh, situation with the headline, NNPC supplies 1.523 billion liters of fuel in three weeks. Abuja queues persist. And it says that um, uh, this is a situation with what's happening in the federal capital territory. Uh, it says the huge supply 
uh, uh, volume by the NMPC has not completely eradicated the queues formed by motorists daily in filling stations in Abuja and environs, while many other outlets still do not dispense petrol due to lack of products. Is that what you find in the it federal will, capital territory? It won't, and it will continue. Even if they finish this one and clear it, it will still occur in, within the next three, four weeks or one month. Until we start refining petroleum products in Nigeria, we are going to be facing these challenges. Coffee, there's no two way about it. We are just going around and around the whole system. Practically 90, 95% of the petroleum products used in Nigeria are being imported. So if there's any problem within the value chain, that is what's going to happen. So uh, whether we like it or not, if they like, let them put 20 million in Abuja and around the whole country. Once there's any problem within the value chain, that is what is going to happen. And if care is not taken, it's not from Abuja and it's spread to other parts of the country. Until we do the right thing, as I've already said, and I've said several years on this program now, until we do the right thing, make sure that we're able to do what we're supposed to do, we'll continue to face this problem. Until we make sure that we are the only country, practically the only country in the world that produces um, um, crude oil, they go around, export crude oil, they go around buying petroleum products. No other country in the world does that. But that is Nigeria for you. That is a country we've come to find ourselves. A land, a country, a land blessed with so much resources, both human and material, but always in want. We are just like elephant that uh, elephant that continue to eat, that have a, a clay feet. When you see an elephant having a clay feet, you, you know what that means. We are so large, but very, very unproductive. That is the problem of Nigeria. That is the problem of leadership. And that is where we have find ourselves. I pray that our leaders will come to learn, come to terms to make sure that and see the sufferings of Nigerians and see this as we are sending them, we are just giving them a mandate to be able to lead us. Every other Nigerian can have the capacity to lead, but it's because we don't have the privilege of doing that. Those that have the privilege should fear God and be able to rule and lead with the fear of God. But our leaders are there, none of them have that, if I can tell you properly. Uh, uh, Chris, the, the surprising aspect of all of this is that um, I'm not seeing any queues in Lagos, which is a, a bigger city than Abuja. Abuja is the if seat of power. Abuja, don't worry. Don't worry. It will come to Lagos if you continue the way it's, it's not. It's not coming Abuja. to Lagos. I reject it. Okay, okay, you're praying too. <laughs> I share your thesis. I share your thesis, Kofi. I pray it doesn't come to Lagos because if come, now will I be that. Uh, but I think... Um, Sir. Uh, it's, it's just okay. It's okay. I remember the vi a video that was uh, was was shot by uh, a, a social media user of um, black market operators also sell petrol in jerry cans by the roadside during the last major fuel crisis, the um, dirty fuel gate, you want to call it that. Uh, they were selling it just opposite the NMPC headquarters. That's skyscraper. <laughs> exactly. 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 Paradox of exactly. a nation. It's sad. Yes, it's re it it's really sad. I, I wonder how the president will feel. Does he not see, at least when he was going to Eagle Square yesterday, did he see uh, people selling petrol on the roads in Abuja? It, it's, it's, it's an inexplicable paradox that the seat of power, the, the, the federal capital territory of Nigeria, is where we're having fuel scarcity to the extent that it's people are selling petrol on the roads. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, my brother. It's unfortunate. It's not unfortunate. Right. Let's keep on praying. <laughs> Let's see. We'll, we'll have mercy on the politicians and just give them some little attention. Uh, the, the, <laughs> yeah. just, the jostling for the vice president, uh, the, the VP slot or the running mate uh, slot, as far as the major political parties are concerned, is still on. Uh, we start with what the Guardian newspaper has used as this major headline. Uh, PDP narrows VP choice to Wike Okoa Udom. Is what the Guardian newspaper is saying. Is, is the PDP on the right track? Barely, they have barely 20, 72 hours to do that. And I hope within the next 48 hours, we should be able to know who the uh, vice president of the two parties will be. Let's wait and see. There are so much politics going on and uh, here and there. And uh, so for the two major political parties. Let's see how it's going to swing. Nobody can for sure say where it's going to be. But in the next uh, 48 hours to 72 hours, they have no choice but to come out whether it's going to be a Christian from the, for the PDP, whether it's going to be Muslim, Muslim for the APC, we'll wait and see. But they should be careful in choosing their vice president because that in itself is going to uh, be a, a, a change, cut sort of, for when it comes to the election come 2023. Mm. The, 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 the front page headline from The Guardian didn't mention 
anybody from the southeast. Uh, it remains to be seen if the party will look that way. But I want to thank you very much for your time, Chris Kende Wando. It's been a thrill having you this morning and looking forward to having you next time. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice day. Thank you. And that's the size of, uh, of the press this morning on The Breakfast. We'll return with analysis of so first major discussion. But that's before, uh, not before we tell you what happened today in history. We'll be right back.